<laughs> and then and then and then he says he says, Madam, that's not a urinal, that's a cake display. <laughs> <laughs> The freelancers had relocated to the now rarely visited observation deck of the pale blue dot and were currently somewhere between their 10th and 20th drink of this most unexpected reunion. In front of them, a wall of glass looked out across the vastness of space and somewhere amidst the solar glares, stars, asteroids and space dust toward a tiny pixel-sized speck of almost nothing, aka Earth or the original pale blue dot. To Jahanara and Glorfindel, the extraneously conscious light orb, however, there seemed to be several dots out there, of varying colour and hue, for in their drunkenness the cosmos had become kaleidoscopic. Welded into the floor by the window was a plaque. It was engraved with quite a long quote from the aspirational earthling Carl Sagan. With regards to the ephemeral nature of human life, relative to the permanence of Earth, granted a little ironic in hindsight. The bronze of the plaque was now dull and lifeless, and had been grossly defaced by any number of vandals over the years, where once it had read, Look again at that dot. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. Now it read, Look again at that butt. On it, Every but you love, every but you know, every but whoever was, lived out of their butts. In a moment of contented silence between the two companions, Jahanara strained her many eyes, trying to focus on the plaque. She sniggered. So? Began Glorfindel, the smoky swirls of their orb a spectrum of Catherine wheeling colour. You've still got to answer my question. You are on a job, right? Their voice, though still imbued with the joviality of drink, carried the slightest hint of caution. Oh, uh, what? Oh, eh, uh, oh, no, no, uh, on a break, on a, on a, on a break, actually, taking a break. We break, you know, t- time off. Jahanara slurred her words. She giggled and hiccuped, <laughs> then began racking up another line of high-grade Saturnalian moon dust in a bid to level her head. Glorfindel studied her thoughts carefully, but found nothing to suggest that she was lying. Unfortunately for Jahanara, however, the orb also studied her movements and didn't fail to notice the way two of her six hands were now tightly clutching the bum bag at her waist. Well, replied Glorfindel, you've chosen quite the holiday destination. Most of us here are either wasters, hermits, or... In hiding. The orb emphasized their last words, the matter of their makeup flashing crystalline blue as Jahanara's hands tightened even further around the bag. Khan snorted first one line of moon dust and then another. She threw back her head. Briefly, her hundred eyes flashed with the brilliance of a nearby sun and her whole body visibly trembled. From her throat, came an excited sequence of trills and clicks. Nonsense words, exclamations of euphoria. She turned to Glorfindel then, offering up the plate, but they shook their orb. You ever noticed, said Jahanara, a little too loudly, that as the universe continues to expand and galaxies move further and further away from each other and even light jumping between them takes longer these days and how there's talk that in the most remotest corners of space a hundred thousand million parsecs from here that all matter has been torn apart and even black holes are dissolving and seeing as that's probably the fate of everything and everyone you ever thought that maybe the universe is just like slowly erasing itself like it's erasing all that it's created up until now in some sort of like total cosmic back to the drawing board type deal until nothing exists exists at all except a dark matter flavoured quantum soup just like glooping around all over the place and that maybe that's exactly the kind of set of circumstances that led to the big bang in the first place then don't you think that given how time is like totally relative and even like not really a universal thing then once the universe has pulled itself apart it might suddenly just like explode again and start all over again and that the theoretical multiverse might just be like layers layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of universal creation and destruction and creation and destruction and creation meaning that we might be the first or 
forward, we might be like the billionth attempt the universe has made to manifest itself into consciousness and thus like, observe itself. <laughs> she shook her head. It's just freaking gnarly, dude. Jahanara's eyes were a multiverse of collapsed and reforming universes. She paused to get her breath back, looking around for a lighter to light her cigarette with. Glorfindel offered her theirs. Good moon dust then, is it? They smiled thinly. Oh, the best, aye. Jahanara nodded enthusiastically. You want some? The orb shook their orb again. Still no. Now come on, Nara. Level with me. What's in the bag? Jahanara, riding the high like an astral surfer, rides the solar flares of a dying sun, glanced shiftily around the empty room. In the observation deck of the pale blue dot, there was only she, her orb in arms, and the chaotic quietude of outer space. Her wings the colour of spilled petrol, twitching in translucent arcs, the freelancer curled a lip to reveal the fleshy roof of her mouth. She clicked with a mixture of apprehension and anticipation and unzipped her bum bag. Glorfindel didn't know quite where to look. On the one hand, there was the contents of Jahanara's bum bag, a sight so dazzling, so dangerous and reckless and awe-inspiring that they were struck completely dumb. On the other hand, there were Jahanara's thoughts, currently flooding the space between them in a constant stream of contradiction. Pride at her accomplishment, regret at revealing her secret, curiosity as to Glorfindel's reaction, and a heady mix of lust, envy, and hyper-awareness. Yet above all, there was fear. Fear of repercussion. Fear of the thing itself. Fear of being caught. At long last, Glorfindel regained composure. Can, her eyes drunkenly bewitched by the unquantifiable allure of her loot, eventually did so too, zipping her bag back up and returning it to the protection of her arms. She turned to face her friend. That's not... said the orb. It is. You didn't. Jahanara laughed nervously. I did. What that's... protested the orb. <sighs> I know, right? said Can like one scheming schoolchild conspiring with another. Jahanara, what the hell were you thinking? Glorfindel, the extraneously conscious light orb, turned a sickly shade of yellow. Jahanara scoffed, a little offended. Oh, come on, you're telling me you wouldn't have been tempted too? A payload this freaking huge? The extraneously conscious light orb seemed to tremble, the transparent walls of their sphere juddering in and out of focus, as they became pale and near colourless, tiny flashes of anxious purple fluttering at the very heart of their being. Khan, whispered Glorfindel, I would roger my own grandparent for a payload that big. I would fly through the supermassive black hole of the Zenovian cluster in a tin can, blindfolded, knob first, for a sliver of a payload that fucking ginormous, but not if it meant doing what you've done. Glorfindel caught their breath, reheating the condensation forming on the inside of their shell until it turned to cloud again. Quietly they swore. Who in quantum hell hired you? Jahanara Khan avoided their gaze, shifting on her perch uneasily. I, uh, she began. I hired me? You are fucking kidding me. Glorfindel turned green. You do know what that is, right? The thing you've stolen? Jahanara grimaced. Uh, yes? <laughs> she hiccuped again and finished her drink, sniffing like a scent hound. You've not got a clue, have you? Orion's bloody belt, Nara. You're carrying... But the extraneously conscious light orb Glorfindel never got to finish their sentence because just at that moment, there came an ear-splitting chorus of gunfire from the lobby of the pale blue dot. The noise was followed shortly after by a sonata of broken glass, frazzled wiring, and the screeching to a halt of the Legionnaires of Sin's PA system. 
Jahanara and Glorfindel spun in the direction of the ruckus, quaking in their boots. Well, at least they would have if either of them wore boots, or indeed had feet. As the sudden explosion of noise settled to a tinnitus hum, there came a voice from the lobby. We are here by order of the Intergalactic Council of Sentience. We have intelligence that you are harboring the fugitive Jahanara Khan. She is wanted, dead or contrived. Bring her to us or be arrested as accessory to her crimes. Boys, get hunting. Oh, Jesus Christ, moaned Jahanara Khan. Who? Why the heck I have to get so bloody blank? What? Why the drunk I have to get so bloody heck? Right. Glorfindel looked their one-time friend, the insectoid, up and down. When once they'd salved relations between the scorpion people of Ouch and their sentient moon, Glorfindel had rather admired the spunk of the freelancer. Now, though, watching her tidying away a spilled gram of Saturnalian moon dust like a teenager at a house party whose mums come home unexpectedly early. All the while, in the next room over, a band of blood-hungry mercenaries tore the pale blue dot a new one, this particular extraneously conscious light orb was beginning to regret ever having bumped into Jahanara Khan in the first place. Momentarily, Glorfindel considered turning her in, but in a surprise turning of the tables, it seemed it was Jahanara's turn to read minds. She turned to them, frowning. In the confines of the orb, Jahanara recognised a scheming clash of gold and understood at once her peril. She inverted her frown, widened her eyes, and began pleading. Hey, Glor, we, uh, we... We're friends, right? We're, we're tight. A breath passed between the pair, taut and silent. At length, Glorfindel relaxed. Damn it, they hissed. If there's not a drug fueled orgy at the end of this, I'm going to be mightily peeved, Miss Can. Whew. She exhaled a gargantuan sigh of relief. Holy Christ, Glorf, you had me scared for a minute there. From the corridor through the door to their left came a scream, a thud, and then silence. Glorfindel and Jahanara looked at each other, the deluge of inebriation gradually dissipating, replaced in its stead by a bitter realisation. Tell me you have a plan. Glorfindel tried not to let their voice shake. Their voice shook. They watched as the air between they and Jahanara filled with the flying freelancer's stream of consciousness. Plan. Plan, 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 read her thoughts. Plan, planny, 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 plan, plan? Do I have a plan? The light orb felt weak. They had never fainted before, and whilst they were not constrained by gravity, they imagined passing out might not feel too great regardless. Suddenly, the light in Jahanara's centurial eyes changed. She looked up at the orb, the clicking of her throat the slightest suggestion of a smile. Then, sweaty fingers fumbling frustratedly at first with the finicky fly of her bum bag, she held her loot aloft. The thing, for which the Intergalactic Council of Sentience had put a price on her head for stealing, was about the size of a regular Earth apple. As such, it made Jahanara look rather small, and it was very curious looking. Not as curious, perhaps, as the curiously christened Normies of Zog, whose faces were actually inverted, such that they had to reach through themselves in order to eat, but curious it was all the same. To look directly at the thing would be to see nothing, but to hold it in one's peripheries was to observe an object which bent, which fractured and relayed light in spectrums previously uncharted. Its edges, though confined to its roughly apple-sized dimensions, might as well have went on forever. At the same time, 
it would be just as true to say that they went nowhere. The object was iridescent and candescent at the same time, both hard and soft, smooth and rough, comprehensible and completely, totally, utterly baffling. It made no sense, and yet it made all the sense in the multiverse. And as Glorfindel watched their companion awkwardly wrestle this thing that was no thing under her control, they were suddenly blindsided by what Jahanara did next. Squinting from the corner of myriad eyes, the freelancer located the portion of the thing she was looking for, the section where earlier she had chipped a splinter off in order to bribe the AI bartender into keeping his damn mouth shut. Then, in the blink of an eye, Jahanara darted out her tongue and prized a similarly sized fragment from the object. Glorfindel gasped. Their orb a raging ocean of sea spray, the colour of the Mariana Trench. Why, oh, oh, we, oh, what? They shrieked, able at last to relocate their faculties of speech. Jahanara, what the fuck? What do you mean, what the fuck? responded Jahanara, quite satisfied with herself. That's, protested Glorfindel, but Jahanara hushed them into silence. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, it's working. Oh, it's working. I have an idea. Yeehaw, Glorf! She exclaimed. I know how to get out of here. I know how to escape. The extraneously conscious light orb just stared at her, and for a second their orb turned a dense, opaque black. Jahanara explained. Right, 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 right. This may sound crazy, yeah? But it happened before, a, a few times now, whenever I nap a bit off this thing to pay folk, right? As soon as I nap a bit off it, I get this wee burst of energy. Not like moon dust energy though, right? But like, like mental energy. I get these thoughts, these ideas. Like how a bowl of thrushweed helps you see things differently, right? From different perspectives. Except with this stuff, your brain really stays clear, and it's... Oh, shit, Glorf. It's like you can see things from every perspective. I... She trailed off, confused to find Glorfindel still on a different wavelength. You insufferable moron! There came another burst of gunfire, this time from the deck directly below, causing the mist inside Glorfindel to condense at a rapid rate quicker than they could evaporate it. To witness this was to see a storm brewing on the horizon. You really have no idea why it does that, do you? Jahanara cocked her head, bewildered. Creation be cursed. Jahanara Khan, you are holding in your hands the fixed, fundamentally standardised unit used by all sentient life to measure the exact nature of one single quota of intelligence, you fucking numbskull! Jahanara cocked her head in the opposite direction. Glorfindel let out a little squeak. <coughs> La- oh. Like a- like a kilogram- you idiot, that, they nodded at the object, is one of the original SIs. Red Dwarf Jahanara, SIs. Intergalactic systems of units. Did you learn nothing in school? The eight SIs. In a manic spurt of nervous energy, Glorfindel, the extraneously conscious light orb, suddenly burst into song. It was a mnemonic device they had learned in their school days, and, a little like the complex algebra we learn in maths class, one they had never thought they'd ever need again, until this very moment. The second for time, the metre to measure, the kilogram is for mass. An ampere measures your electric current, and Kelvin does your temp. The mole is one amount of substance, while Candela checks for light. But hey, what's left? Let's get this right. It's the fucking brainiac for intelligence. Oh. Oh. Jahanara grimaced, 
So this is... The Brainiac. Yes. Well done. You've stolen the Brainiac, Brainiac. (laughs) They laughed wildly. (laughs) No. No. Better than that. It might have been the universe's standard measurement of intelligence when you stole it. But who knows what in space it is now. Now that you've chipped away at it. No wonder you feel suddenly smarter every time you break a piece off of it. You are literally lowering the benchmark for intelligence. You mean... Began Jahanara, rather stupidly. I mean that every time you lower the weight, density, mass, whatever of that thing, you are technically increasing your IQ. I mean, technically you're increasing everyone's IQ, but I guess... Glorfindel was mumbling now. I don't know. <laughs> uh, proximity. <laughs> uh, don't lose it now, Glorfy. Lose it. <laughs> Wish I could lose her. Jahanara stared peripherally at the Brainiac. It hadn't seemed quite so important when she chanced upon it in the dark and dreary annexes of the Council of Sentiences Museum of Everything. All she'd seen was something obviously immensely valuable, sitting locked away in the bowels of some stuffy old prison for nonsense artefacts. In hindsight, the number of security personnel protecting the thing did make a little bit more sense. Shame they hadn't proved more of a match for a flying insectoid with burning starlight for eyes. If they had, she thought, neatly shirking blame, she and Glorfindel might never have ended up in this mess. Presently, Glorfindel, the extraneously conscious light orb, was spinning at 1,000 revolutions per minute, and it was beginning to make Jahanara feel dizzy. She reached out to try and steady them, but only burned her claw against the friction. Glorfindel, she tried, but the orb seemed to have turned deaf. Glorfindel! The door on their left hissed and howled, straining to open against the makeshift blockade the pair had erected. Desperate, Jahanara fired her tongue at the orb. The tongue surface, as porous as moonrock and sticky for it, stuck fast to the transparency of the gaseous freelancer. With all of her might, Jahanara flapped her wings against the pool of her spinning friend, eventually creating enough thrust to slow them down and, finally, to bring them to a halt. Gingerly, she let her tongue go soggy and limp, curling it back into the folds of her mouth. Glorfindel seemed too dazed to notice. Glorf, commanded Jahanara. I'm sorry, okay? But we gotta go and you gotta trust me. Maybe I've done wrong. Okay, okay, definitely I've done wrong, she said at a look from the orb. But believe me when I tell you, this whole intelligence thing, it's working on me. I can feel it and I know how we can escape. Now come on. We gotta go order ourselves some lunch. Are you hungry? Glorfindel looked shell-shocked, which is to say the electrostatic composition of their outer casing seemed newly charged. What? What? Then, after a moment's thought, I, uh, all that booze. I, uh, I guess so, yes. Good, grinned Jahanara. It'll work better that way. Let's go, 